Good morning. Hey, man, I, I like that, that Texan thing y'all just let out. <laughs> Brother Bobby, I, I tell you, I love that. I love that. Uh, it's been so great um, to be with you and, uh, and to be in your midst, man. I, I, I told you, brothers, that, uh, uh, that you really do have something special. And, uh, and I mean that, and that's something that you can be thankful, that's something you can certainly be proud about. Um, but I pray that, that, that you wouldn't stop there, that you would continue uh, to gel and to grow uh, and to just love being around one another. And as we've talked through the week, uh, we, we also want that as you're drawing closer to one another, that, that you know, you, 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 you have these types of bonds that you build. Uh, you've got a kindred brother, a kindred spirit uh, that you can look to and, and, and share uh, your concerns um, and be transparent with. Uh, that's so, so, so very special. Um, and so thank you. Thank you, brothers, man, for, for coming out. And uh, it, 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 I'm thankful, man, that y'all have given me an audience that I can, I can kind of hum with today, man. And so thank you so very much. Um, to uh, Pastor Brownie, hey, man, listen, uh, you're a dear friend. And uh, your brother really loves you. And, uh, and brothers, I tell y'all what, you've been blessed uh, to have that brother as a brother. Amen? Amen. We ought to give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. You bet. You, you bet. You bet. Uh, and so I just, um, as I stand here this morning, uh, I'm thankful. I'm thankful in just so many ways, man. You know, um, I've had the privilege of walking with the Lord for, um, oh boy, I guess 50, 50 plus years now. And, and, uh, you know, it, 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 it's really good. I mean, hey, man, listen, um, I, I turned um, uh, on Mar March 1st, I, I turned, yeah, th that age. And, and <laughs> I did. Uh, yeah, I sure did, man. And, and uh, not only that, but uh, uh, on February 13th, I had the, we had the privilege, uh, my wife and I, Lisa and I, have had the privilege of being together for 40 years of marriage, and so that was really, amen, amen. That's been, been really, really special, it has, man, and, and, uh, and it's been just a good, it's been a good ride, it's been uh, good fellowship, it has. And, uh, you know, but I've been walking, we've been walking with the Lord, man, and, and uh, but uh, it, interesting, interestingly enough, um, in all that time, I've never heard him say, you know, uh, hey, chap, you know, uh, I'm just not sure about this one. What do you think? Mm. You know, or, you know, hey, I, 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 I'm perplexed, just don't know what to do, and we'll follow your lead. It just doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen like that. You see, instead, the Lord has always been the director, yes. Amen. and I've had the privilege of being the recipient, the responder. I've also noticed that, that he never adjusts his plan. <laughs> no, in, in, instead, I'm always adjusting to his plans. I'm adjusting to his, his purposes. And the reason for that, the reason for that is really quite simple. You see, the reason is um, <laughs> he's God and I'm not. How about that? You know, it really is. It's, it just boils down to that. And so he's, he's absolutely perfect in all wisdom, uh, in all his, his knowledge, in all of his understanding. I'm convinced that he knows what's best for each of us in our certain situations, our circumstances. He really does. And so, he's not going to ask us what we think 
or, 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 or where we're going because, listen, he's got it all figured out. We, we talked about this, 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 this weekend that he's the omniscient, all-knowing one. That's who he is. And so he always knows what's best and, and always. And, and, and so if I can trust his plan, that it's the best plan, then, then we're going to make this thing okay. You see, God is a personal creator. And I want you to know that he desires, he desires to be intimately involved in everything that you and I do, in everything we say. Uh, you know, I, I, I've heard a brother say, well, you know, hey, man, um, <laughs> My parents didn't want me. That's okay. God did. Hear me say that. God did, okay? All right? And, and, and perhaps, perhaps that's why you're here today. Perhaps that's why you're here today. You see, he wants you to know unequivocally that he loves you. And he has a plan for your life. A wonderful plan, and, but, but you and I must listen and adjust our schedule to where, to where, to where he is. We've got to trust him. We do. And, and, and so, you see, we, we've, got to, we've, we've got to decide if God's not going to change, then who? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if, if he doesn't take orders, then who? Me. You. That's what it's all about. It is. You see, we've got to be willing to make the necessary adjustments in order that we might get smack dab, just, just right, in that, right in that little wave, just smack dab in the middle of his wheel. That's what we've got to do. That's where we've got to be. And so, I'm going to ask you, if you would, if you would turn in your Bibles with me. Turn in your Bibles, whether, whether it's Bible or sale. Hey, man, you know, man, you brothers are good on, 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 on bringing your book. And I tell you what, I'm really proud of that. Uh, but uh, whatever device you have, turn with me to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. And, and uh, as you know, man, when you've got, we're going to go chapter 4, verse 17. When you've got that, please say, I've got it. 417, 417, amen, 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 that's good. 417, and this is the word of the Lord. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren James, the son of Zebedee, and, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mm, mending their nets. And he called them, verse 22 says, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Pray with me for just a second. Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Father, for meeting us here these last two days. Thank you for giving us intimate bonds and, and uh, opportunities to share. And uh, you've just lavished your love upon us. And so we just thank you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this morning. We pray that you would speak. And that I would listen and allow your words to flow 
And then we pray even today, even right now, Lord Jesus, would you, would you touch our hearts? Would you touch our spirits? And as you've touched them, Father, would we, would we respond to you today and do exactly what you say? And so we ask these things today. Open our ears that we might hear. Open our hearts, Father, that we might respond. And so we give you praise and we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen. We, uh, we look here at our, at our, our scripture here and, and we note that, that Jesus had just called Pete and Drew, James and John. Did you know that those, that's two sets of brothers? Two sets of brothers, man, and he's called them to follow him. And, and in order to do that, they, these brothers had to make some serious Serious adjustments. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> they had to make some adjustments, but I want you to understand we've been kind of just edging on that, but you and I have got to make some serious adjustments too. Constantly. Constantly. And if we're going to follow him with, and, and give our lives to him, we've got to make the adjustment. We've got to make the adjustment. And, and, and so the question is, what is Jesus up to? He's called these men. They've, they've made some decisions. And, and, and what's on Jesus' mind? <laughs> Let me say this to you. I don't know if you figured this out yet, but, but, but um, our God is not big into details, okay? Uh, he's, he's really just not. You see, here's the thing. He was going to make these men wise teachers, able to, 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 to really touch the hearts of individuals, wise teachers and proclaimers of the gospel. That's what he was going to do. Hmm. Pete, oh man, listen, it was God's plan to, to shape and to mold, to build and, and to make bold. This brother was going to preach and, 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 and on the day of Pentecost, but, but that was a few years off. And thousands would come. <laughs> That's Acts chapter 2. But, but, but watch this. He didn't tell him any of that. He didn't give him the detail. <laughs> Not at all. He just simply said, follow me. Follow me. He didn't go into, you know, what's going to happen here. And, and, and I tell you what, man, uh, if you look here on this particular date, we're going to make this drive and this curve and all that type of thing. He, he didn't get into any of that. He just said, hey, listen, follow, follow me, follow me. Well, listen, they, okay, they, 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 they began and, and they say that I'm going to follow you. But they certainly had to make some adjustments. Adjustments to their circumstances. These, these men had been fishermen all of their lives, and, 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 and this was all they knew. This was the way that they provided for their families. And so they had to, they had to modify their vocation. They had to stop immediately, okay? You see, Jesus didn't say, hey, well, follow me when you get around to it. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't say, follow me, you know, when, 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 whenever, it, whenever you feel like it. Yeah. He simply said, follow me. And isn't it interesting how God speaks into your lives and, 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 and into your heart? He speaks, and he gives you the bottom line. Again, he's not in the details, man. He's not. He says most of times, okay, no details at all. Mm. He says this, here is what I want you to do. Here's what I want you to do, and, and, and watch this. You may be successful in, in, in the eyes of the world, 
But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, some of the stuff fails in comparison. You see, these men had to, had to face this, and, and you and I, we've got to face this. We do. Let, let, me, just, let me just ask you this, this question. What area, you all know I've told you, man, it, all, it always comes back and spins back and lands in your lap, but what area of your life has he placed his finger on? in your heart. You see, he, he's, been, he's been probing you for some time now, you know, and, and, and obviously, you, you know, you've come around and, and, and you've kind of you've worked this thing a little bit. You, you've kind of looked at the necessary alterations, and, and, but he's made it clear that this is what I'm looking for you to do. And, and you, we keep going back, and you've tried to calculate how, how we're going to work this thing out. You keep asking him questions. Lord, what, what about this? And, and, and can we do it this way? Hmm. What if, what if, what if? You tell him, Lord, this won't work. I mean, hey man, I've been this way before, and all of that. But he keeps putting his finger right there. Right there. Right there, and he's not, he won't stop, he won't back up. Here's why. He says, you know, because we all have to make adjustments, okay? Alterations, modifications to do what God is calling us to do. It's a necessary part of life. It really is. <laughs> You look over and you don't have to turn there, but in Genesis chapter 6, you see, when God spoke to Noah, told Noah, hey, listen, I want you to build a boat, big boat. The only way that Noah could accomplish such a task was to make radical adjustments, radical adjustments. Hmm. There was no other way. He couldn't maintain his schedule and God's schedule at the same time. He just couldn't do it. You see, if Noah had not been willing to adjust his circumstances, then he wouldn't have built the ark. And he and his family would have perished right along with everyone else. When God called Abe, Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, he said, I want you to leave your family and, and during that time, that, that, you know, this, that was totally countercultural to what they were used to doing. He said, but I want you to leave your family and, 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 and leave the Ur of the Chaldees and, and go to a land, watch this, a land that I will show you. It wasn't like he said, hey, listen, you know, Abe, we're going to stop here at the Holiday Wind uh, right down here. No, he didn't do any of that. All right? He just said, go. And had Abe not been willing to make the adjustment to his circumstances and follow the Lord as he was moving his family, he would not have become the father of the nation of Israel. Well, what about Mo? Moses, I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 3, brother on the backside of the desert, shepherding sheep. God spoke from a burning bush, saying this, I, I want you to leave this place, and I'm going to stab you. I'm going to make it so that you stand before Pharaoh, and you're going to say to Pharaoh, let my people go. Hmm. And I'm going to make you the liberator of the Hebrew people. That's what he told him. They're going to become, he said, my special, my special nation. And, 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 but the only way, huh, the only way that, that, that Mo could obey God, he had to make a radical adjustment. Hear me say that. A radical adjustment. His thinking had to change. His circumstances had to change. When God, when God, when God spoke to Jonah, 
He says, hey, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to Nineveh. <laughs> I want you to preach the truth about the one true God. Huh? But Jonah was so prejudiced against these Ninevites. Hey, man, listen, man, you know, they, they've done Israel so wrong. They were, he was right about what they did. And, you know, and, 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 and so God said, go. Jonah said, no, all right. And no can do. He, he said that in the Hebrew tongue, but you get it, all right? Jonah said, I, I, I want to obey you, but I, but I can't do it. And, and, and so instead of going one direction toward Nineveh, he packed up, got on a boat, and went in the total exact opposite direction. That's what he did to Tarshish, okay? That's what he did. And you remember what happened. You see, God had to encourage him a little bit, you see. God changed, you know, had to help him change his mind, okay? And, and, and so he gave him a whale of a ride in the belly of a, <laughs> of, a, of a big fish. He really did. And Scripture says over in Jonah 2, 2, he says literally that he screamed. He screamed out of the belly of hell for deliverance. God heard his cry. Hmm. And sent him on a one-way trip all the way back. This fish vomits this pouting prophet onto the shore of Nineveh. Can you imagine this brother was stinking so bad? Fish breath. It was a bad thing, man. I'm telling you. Goodness gracious. You see, Jonah couldn't get there quick enough the second time around. He was, he was on about his business getting on to Nineveh. He was, man. I guarantee you. You know? I, I, I want you to see that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you are. Um, to live in God's will and maintain a consistent course, we've been talking about that. It requires, I want you to see, it requires making periodic adjustments. Some of the adjustments we've been talking about in those, just those last few instances there, those are adjustments related to location and, and nations of people. But listen, you're going to have to make several potential adjustments. There are several different types. Adjustments in the ways that we think. Huh. In the ways that we think and, and why we think that way. We're going to have to make adjustments in terms of our feelings about other individuals and how we treat them. Man, that's huge. Adjustments, adjustments, adjustments. We've got to make adjustments about sin and, 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 and the gap that it places. Watch this. When we sin, there's a, there's a, there's a distance that it makes. It separates and we've got to make that adjustment. We've got to make that adjustment. We do. We do. Um, our desire is to stay in the will of God. As situations change and as circumstances are altered, we must be willing to make the proper, the proper, the proper adjustment. And watch this. Those who are willing to do that, God is going to bless He's going to abundantly bless. But those who are not willing, those who are afraid for some reason to make the change, watch this, no matter how long they live, there will always be something missing, missing in their lives. Why? Because they chose something other than God's best. It just won't be complete. So, then here's the, here's the deal. What's the process? How does God lay this thing out? Let, let, let's imagine that this is God's will over here. And, and so, God says, hey, listen, this is what I want you to do. And you respond, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm game. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in on that, you know, okay? And, 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 and so, he said, hey, you're saying, hey, okay, let's get started. And God says, oh, oh wait, 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 son. Slow your roll, okay? All right? This is not quite that simple. 
You see, that's not so fast. You see, between where you are now and where I want you to be, you see, that, 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 that difference right there, you see, there's a few adjustments that you're going to need to make, all right? You've got to make an adjustment to your circumstances, okay? And, and so, you're not going to have to go through this whole range of things all the time, but sometimes it might be your relationships. Sometimes. You've got to adjust the way that you think. You, we've got to adjust our commitments. We've got to adjust them. Um, understand this, that, that I'm always number one. That's God talking, okay? I'm always number two, one, number one. And, and then you've got to possibly adjust sometimes your belief system. Because here's the rule. Here's the rule. You have got to trust me. God's saying that. You've got to trust me no matter what you see, no matter what you hear, no matter what you feel. We've got to trust him. We've got to trust him. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. All right? So here's the question. Am I willing to do whatever it takes? Whatever it takes, man. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. You know, you, you can't, I can't manipulate these adjustments. Just isn't going to work. You see, they're too trying, too costly, too painful. Sometimes we have to change locations. Many things could be involved, but I'm doing whatever it takes to get into the center of his will. That's where I am. That's where I am. And so I've got to make the adjustment. But, but I, I want you to see, here's the tragedy. Sometimes we hear, we hear, okay, okay, God, I, I, I hear what you said. But I, I, I just can't, I, I just can't. Do it. You can't afford not to do it. You can't afford not to do it. There's just no way. Uh, you know, you see, this is what God is requiring. This is what we've got to do. And so consequently, first, first, I want you to see that God speaks to us and he gives us a glimpse. I'm going to try to just take you through the process, okay? He gives us a glimpse of what he's doing the next thing that happens is we have a crisis of faith. <laughs> we begin saying, well, 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 Lord, what about this? And, and what about that? And, and what if my family isn't going to agree and my, my wife? What if, what, what if the finances don't add up? We began going through all of these things. And this crisis of faith, man, it's a continuous thing. It is. I get it. I get it. During this whole time of making these adjustments, my crisis of faith, it's right there. It's right there. And the reason why is this. Because he's never, he just doesn't give us all the details, the details that we need. Sometimes he gives us a bit. Have you ever been there? Then go silent. And man, that, 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 can, that, that used to drive me wild, right? You know, and we go through this long list of questions and, and, and guesses and answers and, and we're saying, Father, 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 you see. <laughs> but it comes down to do I really believe what he's saying? Do I really believe that he is who he says he is? And am I willing to step out. You know, it's amazing, man, to, to take that first step and, and trust in him that, that, that when your foot meets the ground, he's going to be right there. That's the question. But here's what I know. This is what faith is all about, that faith is all about placing, placing my trust 
in God for what I need. Placing my trust in God when, 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 wherever I need it, whenever, however, I'm trusting him. And he's under no obligation on any details. Now, if I really, if I really believe and trust him, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make the adjustment. Hear me say that. Someone has said that the making of the adjustment is, 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 is the revelation of my faith. In him, if my faith is in him, if it's right, he'll lead me to make the adjustment. And so, he wants us to have this, a crisis of faith, adjustments that need to be made, and, 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 and I obey him, and I'm blessed. I get blessed. Not sometimes. I want you to know this. Every single time, every time, every act of obedience to God produces blessing in my life. Now, it may not be the, 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 the way that we wanted and the exact thing that I was looking for, and the, the, that's not the issue. The issue is, what does God do? Please say that. And so, I'm asking, what is it? What is it that God's laying on your heart that he wants you to do? You know it's going to require an adjustment. You know that, all right? In your thinking, um, in just, you know, uh, your commitments, relationships, circumstances, your belief system, all of that, what are you facing that you know that you have to make an adjustment on? That's the question. And then let me ask you this. To the degree that you understand and know God, to the degree that you do, would he ever require you to make such an adjustment where it would not be beneficial. On, on, on the other hand, well, that, that would threaten you. He, he wouldn't, let me just say this, he wouldn't do that. He cares about you and me too much. And so, as we're up here and as we're learning these things and we're putting them into practice, we're seeing, hey, God is a faithful God, and God is a faithful God. And God is a faithful God. And we see it over and over and over and over again in Scripture. Well, there are two responses. Two responses. Yes, Lord. I'll make the adjustment. Or, <laughs> no, God. I won't. Okay, there, there's two adjustments. I, I, I want you just to see real quick that, 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 that there are two biblical examples. One of the examples that we have is the example of the, the, the rich young ruler. You all remember that. Uh, uh, you might just jot down Luke 18, 18 through 23. You see, the commandments, this guy keeping the commandments, that wasn't the issue. He was going to keep the commandments. Um, Jesus knew exactly what the issue was, okay? He was a good, moral man. That's good, okay? All right, he, he was that. You see, but, but Jesus said this, there's one thing that you lack. One thing. <laughs> he did. He said, sell all you have. Distribute it to the poor. <laughs> And you'll have treasure in heaven. Huh, what a promise. It really was. You see, and then he says, come and follow me. There's one, only one, only one, only one adjustment that you need to make. He says, you need to get rid of that God, that small G-O-D in your life. Mm. Those material possessions, they're covering you up. You won't trust me until you get rid of that stuff. And we know his response. <laughs> he went away sad. But then there's the other. Back, back our, our, to our main text, the four fishermen. 
Jesus said, follow me. Follow me. And he didn't promise these fishermen, he didn't promise them what he promised the young rich ruler. He said, just follow me. Just follow me. I know there are a lot of adjustments that you're going to have to make, and, and, and they made them. And they followed him. Think about this. Look what they would have missed. Look what they would have missed had they not made these adjustments. Watch, watch this. <laughs> they had the privilege of walking with Jesus Christ for a period of three years, seeing him do miraculous things. Do you know what you're going to miss? What I'm going to miss, if, if, if we don't get in God's will and begin walking, no, we, we, we don't know. And they didn't know either. You see, I'm just saying to you, but I can testify to you today. You know, I, I, used, to, I used to hear people, you know, uh, older people, I used to hear them say, you know, uh, boy, I can, I, can, I, can, I can tell you what God did in my life. <laughs> And I was a young brother back then. I'm going, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. Now I'm mimicking what they're saying. Man, can I tell you what God has done and what he continues to do in our lives? And many of you here have, have trusted him and you're walking with him and you're seeing him move. I'm saying to you, are you willing to make the adjustment? Are you willing to do what he says do? Understanding up front, man, he ain't, he's not in the details, but that's okay. Because he's spotted around, and even in this room, he's left testimonies of different brothers and, and, and where he's brought them from to and what he's done for some of you. I want you to know that he'll do for others of you. But we've got to trust him. We've got to trust him. I'm going to ask you just to bow your heads for just a moment. Mm. I just wonder, I'm, I'm praying and, and just, um, I'm wondering where are you today? And not so much me, but, 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 but the Lord is, 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 is wondering just, and not wondering, I, I take that back because he already knows exactly where you are. He already knows the struggles that you're facing the questions that you have right here today. And that's okay. You can lay that before him. But today, as you're dealing, asking, Father, what is it? What is it that you're saying to me? The Lord is able to speak to you ever so clearly. The Spirit of God that rests in your heart and in your mind. He's there and he wants to speak clearly to you. Would you give him the opportunity? Would you give him the opportunity today? Let me just uh, pray with me if you would. Lord, we love you. And we thank you so much for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for just uh, the way you meet us, the way that you take care of us, the way you protect us, the way that you provide for us. And so just right now, I just pray, I pray that as my brother comes, I pray that you would, uh, that you would do business with him. as you bow, just do business with him in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm.